Okay guys, so this is gonna be a relatively short video. I am out here at Explore USA RV Supercenter in Bernie, Texas, and I am gonna to talk to you a little bit more in depth on why I feel that fifth wheels shouldn't be towed by half-ton trucks, at least the vast majority of half-ton trucks. Again, for those of you who are starting to already type and talk about how I hate half-ton trucks, I don't hate half-ton trucks. However, there are certain aspects that you definitely want to be aware of whenever you start thinking of what you can tow with a half-ton truck. So anyways, let's get right to it. I'll be right back. All right, this fifth wheel has a 12,200 pound GVWR. Relatively light, relatively small for a fifth wheel. This is a Forest River impression. We're not gonna walk through the inside of this one because I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the whole half ton towing fifth wheel point. So this specific unit as configured right now with no battery and empty propane tanks is likely gonna transfer about 14 to 1500 pounds of pin weight to the back of a truck. What does that mean whenever you put a fifth wheel hitch and people and cargo and supplies in, in your truck? You're gonna have a total of around probably 2,500 pounds worth of payload on your truck suspension, which for 99% of half ton trucks sold will be about six to 700 pounds over what your truck is designed to carry from a payload perspective. So that there in itself is a reason not to tow a heavy fifth wheel or really any fifth wheel with your typical half ton truck. Even if you get to your super light fifth wheels, which are generally gonna have that 10,000 pound GVWR, maybe an 8,000 pound empty weight, you're still talking roughly 1,200, 2,500 pounds worth of pin weight transferring to your truck before you factor in hitch, the people, the batteries, the propane, all of that, which still means you're gonna be north of 2,000 pounds whenever you are ready to start actually towing it. So those are probably the single most important reasons why you don't want to tow most of your fifth wheels with half tons. There are some super, super compact fifth wheels that are generally okay, but I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the ones that you typically see at your RV dealerships. Now, I am going to give you a way of specifically seeing and experiencing what I talk about when I talk about the difference in suspension and payload capacities of a half ton truck and a three quarter ton. So let's say that your half ton truck has a 1500, 1600 or 1700 pound payload capacity, which is probably 90% of them out there. If you go out to your truck, factor how much you probably weigh, let's just say you weigh between 150 and 250 pounds, somewhere in there. And you stand on the bumper of your truck, the back bumper, and hold yourself on the tailgate and you start hopping up and down, just bouncing your weight up and down on the bed or the back bumper of your truck, I want you to see what impact that has on your suspension. If it's a modern truck that has softer suspension designed for ride comfort and giving you that luxury SUV type feel when you're driving, your truck is likely gonna have anywhere between two to two and a half inches each way of movement when you start hopping up and down on that back bumper. The suspension on these trucks are designed for comfort. Yes, they can carry some payload and they can do it okay and the shocks dampen that movement. But just as an example, stand on your back bumper and hop up and down. Do it in front of your spouse so they can kind of see what it looks like from the side. Record it so you have kind of an idea of what it looks like. Now keep in mind, you might be between 150 and 250 pounds. Multiply that times 10 and imagine what it's like when you're towing a fifth wheel down the road and you start hitting bumps and the weight transfer from that fifth wheel starts applying that 1500 to 2500 pounds downward and pulling back on it as it rebounds. And the weight is gonna be significantly more than that. There are certain periods of time when that pin weight can come down when you go over a bump and you're probably in the 4000 pound range simply because of the amount of force being applied downwards just through momentum and inertia. You have to keep in mind that the half ton suspension typically, even though you may feel you're in the safe margin to tow something like this, can you handle it when the road conditions aren't ideal? Can you handle it when things start really getting bumpy and you really have that weight pressing down on the back of your vehicle? Because again, if you go out to your truck and you hop up and down on your bumper and you feel just how much movement there is in your suspension and you only weigh 150, 250 pounds in that range, imagine when you start throwing over 2,000 pounds worth of weight over the back of your axle and then you hit a large expansion joint or a large bump or some of these imperfect roads where there's a lot of potholes and the amount of force actually being applied to your truck in a downward and then rebounding back up 
type energy situation. You just don't want to deal with that. It's not fun. It's very dangerous and it turns what's supposed to be an enjoyable time into something that could be a nightmare, especially if you get into an accident. And that is the reason why I typically say half tons aren't designed for it. They don't have the payload capacity, which is A, well, most of them don't, but more importantly, their suspension is significantly softer than that of a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. Take that exact same example, get on the back of a three quarter ton or a one ton truck, whether it's a single rear wheel or a dually, and do that same thing. You're just gonna be you know, working your butt off and you might get it to move an inch. But the fact is, that stiffer suspension is what equates to typically a safer towing experience. The trailer has less ability to manipulate the truck. That's the key. I talk about that when towing travel trailers and I talk about it with fifth wheels. One of the biggest reasons why you get sway when you're towing a travel trailer is because of all the forces and energy at play against your travel trailer, whether it be from misalignment, whether it be from wind hitting it, whether it be from different angles of the road or different conditions, whether it be from weight and distribution. The fact is, that your trailer controlling the truck is gonna lead to more accidents than anything. And having a truck that's capable of handling the weight better and not moving as much and creating that rock solid platform in front of the trailer is gonna be key when it comes to stability and counteracting the forces of sway. Again, the example I've given in the past is if you're walking a little tiny poodle or a chihuahua on a leash, when that dog wants to go anywhere it wants to go, you can just pull it back in line or sometimes you don't even have to do anything. You just walk and it forces the dog to follow you. Now put a you know, 200 pound dog behind you on a leash. If that dog wants to go off and play, it's gonna be dictating how you walk and how you can keep yourself stable all day long because the dog is gonna have much more control over how you're actually pulling it. The same is true with trailers. You wanna control the trailer, you don't want the trailer to control you. Anyways, I thought it was worth sharing that because I like to hammer this topic home because I don't want people to get into bad situations and I don't want you to potentially feel like you made a bad purchasing decision only because you know this is the truck I have and I'm bound to get the biggest RV I can hook up behind it because I don't wanna to have to get a new truck. I would rather you get a smaller RV, maybe even save some money, something that's well within what your truck's capable of towing safely have a better overall experience even though you may be a little bit more cramped or you may have to put up with you know other family members being right next to you all the time but so you get where you're going safer and you don't have to deal with the stress of feeling like you made a bad purchasing decision that's potentially endangering you putting more wear and tear on your vehicle or endangering others on the road anyways guys i sure hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon